Welcome back to Grief Inspired. My name is Katherine McNulty and what we do here is we learn how to keep on living after losing the people that we love. And if you've lost someone in your life, you know that that is not an easy task. You know that that is something that you should not do alone. And you know that that is something that together we can grieve better. So today I want to talk about how to find peace in grief. You know, I speak with so many clients who have lost people that they love. And so often when I ask before they come into my course, I give them a survey and I say, what is it that you want? And there's so many of you who have said, I just want to find inner peace. I want to be at peace with my loss, with my life, with where I'm going, with what's next. And I think that's so important because finding that peace in our life is something that so many of us are looking for. And it's something that me personally, I'm looking for more peace in my life. And I think that it's been a journey and it's continue going to be a journey. And I think for me personally, it's going to be a lifelong pursuit. And so I think what we can do is find, find moments of peace to create a life of peace. And there's different ways that we can do that. So to talk about well, what is peace, um, I'm very goal fo focused and saying, okay, well, if you want peace, what does that mean? What does peace look like to you? So I want you to take some time today. If you're, if you have said, oh, I just need a little bit of peace. What does that mean for you? Uh, peace as defined. I've taken some notes here. Peace is a state of tranquility, security, harmony. Peace is a lack of conflict. Hmm. We could dive into that for sure. Um, freedom from upsetting thoughts and feelings. I love this so much because grief, I know my grief personally, and for so many that I've talked to, grief creates an upset, a lack of peace, um, a confusion, a flood of questions. Why did this happen? Why did it happen to me? All of the rumination that we go through, the thoughts that we replay over and over again. How about the guilt, the betrayal, the resentment, how we make ourselves wrong for what we didn't do or make ourselves wrong for maybe what we did do. And we become bound to our thoughts and they, they take over. And when we want to quiet our thoughts, sometimes that's hard because we can't shut it off. Anybody who's been up in the middle of the night looking at the ceiling going, I'm exhausted and I want to sleep, but can't because of what's going on in your mind. Um, that is a lack of peace. It's not having, it's a lack of freedom from upsetting thoughts and feelings. And how about, you know, I mentioned peace is a lack of conflict. Where are you at conflict in your life right now? Are you in conflict with yourself, with your feelings, with your emotions, with your thoughts, with, with who you are or what you've done? Are you at conflict with the relationships that you have, the people in your life who are trying to help and maybe can't, or you feel like they're failing you, or the people who aren't showing up at all? Are you at conflict? So take time today and ask yourself, where, where am I feeling conflict? Where am I not having a freedom from upsetting thoughts and feelings? And what does truly being at peace mean for you? I am an introvert, right? An introvert is someone who gets energy from being alone. And so I can go out and I can be extroverted and I can be with people. But when I do that, it drains my energy. And so for me, in order to find more peace and tranquility, 
I need to take time to be alone, to be able to look within, to be with my thoughts in a way that's, that's helpful. And so for me being reflective and saying, who am I and what do I want and where am I going and what are my goals for my life and my future and my child and all of it, like that's restorative for me. For someone who is extroverted, right? Peace may be, I just need to be with people. I want to have strong, deep and meaningful connections. What is peace for you? That's what I want you to take time today. Related words to peace. I love this. Um, and this might help you in terms of finding peace. Friendship. Love. Reconciliation. Understanding. And patience. So there's so much about this to unpack. Friendship. Do you need lots of friendships? And does that bring you peace, knowing that you have lots of friendships in your life? Or are you, are you like I am, where it's like, you know what? I just, I need some deep, meaningful conversation. I had a, an amazing um, time getting to meet one of my grief clients who I hadn't met in person because we've done everything on Zoom. And Jane Weathers and I spent hours having deep, meaningful conversations and that brings me peace and friendship. It makes me feel love and connected. Reconciliation is another word, related word to peace. Where do you need to be reconciled? Or maybe it's understanding. So much of what I do here at Grief Inspired is try to educate you and teach you about grief and your grief journey and the grief experience because for me, having an understanding. Why is this happening? Why does it show up like this? What is normal in grief? That level of understanding was something that brought me comfort, that brought me peace. Because I feel like the more educated you are about what's happening, the less uncertainty that you have and maybe the more control that you can have. And there's a, there's a piece that I found um, that when I don't know something or something's going on, I educate myself because that for me brings peace. Um, and patience. Patience is a big one um, in terms of looking at peace. I've realized that peace is in the moment. Peace is in right now. So if you take a moment and, and say, I'm grateful to be here, to have access to the internet, to have time to maybe take a break and, and learn something about your grief, which is probably why you're here. Um, take that moment in. And so finding inner peace and, and can often live in the moment. So that's something that I'm working to cultivate, being more present, being mindful um, of this moment and saying, look, everything's good right now. So the Dalai Lama, when I was doing my research, says that a calm mind allows you to see things more realistically as they are and objectively. When we are not at peace, when we are worked up, when we are upset, when we are in conflict with ourselves or others, we can't see things realistically. We, we dramatize things, we catastrophize things, we, we get overwhelmed with our emotions and maybe make the problems bigger than they are. I'm speaking from experience because I do it. So it's not a judgment, but that's what we do. So if you wanna cultivate peace in a calm mind, it's looking at things realistically, objectively. And so he says, okay, great. It's good to have a calm mind. Maybe we all are in agreement of that, but how do you do that? Well, it starts with the things that destroy a calm mind is what he says. Fear, hmm, where are you at odds with yourself? Where are you in fear? Suspicion, how do you worry about other people around you or what's gonna happen? in your life hatred where do we where do we lean toward hatred even if you you know say ah oh, i don't hate but but where do you have a propensity to like lean into that um and have a little less love and more hatred than what you need anger greed all of these things 
They're the things that destroy a calm mind. So I want to give you an exercise today to help cultivate a calm mind in the moment because I'm all about tools. Um, and this is a tool that in my research, um, I found uh, Andrew Huberman, who is a neurobiologist, I think is that the right way, or neuro neuroscientist. Um, and he says that the fastest way to calm down, to cultivate a calm mind, is with what he calls a physiological sigh. So we're actually teaching our body physically to calm down. Um, I think we, we all know that our thoughts can do things to our body. I think that that's becoming much more mainstream, that, that our thoughts can make us sick. And so in order to calm the mind, you can go at it from physically calming the body. So this is the, the physiological sigh. And the way, you, the way you do the physiological sigh is you have a double inhale followed by a long exhale. And so the way it's been described to me as taking sips of breath, so you take two sips of breath. So it looks like this. If you take two sips of breath followed by a longer exhale, and I want you to try it now, try it with me now. Wow, okay, I just, like I'm feeling it. It works physiologically. Try it now. And I want you to take a minute and you can close your eyes after doing that. And you can feel how much calmer your body feels. And it's remarkable, this little tiny tool that takes seconds can help us cultivate peace of mind. And, and when we can calm our body for a minute, we can look at things more realistically and then we can take action to help us cultivate more peace. And that action can be, like I said, looking at things a little bit more clearly. Maybe it's looking at conflict and saying, what can I do in this scenario to let the conflict die down? I so much want for you all to find that peace of mind, that calm, and I think, it's, I think it's a tool and a skill that we can learn as a result of our grief that can really pay big dividends in our life. So do not forget the physiological sigh, which is the two steps in, the longer exhale out. Remember that we're looking to find peace. And if that is the goal for you, it's a state of tranquility, security, harmony, lack of conflict, freedom from upsetting thoughts and feelings. And those are all the things that we work on here. If you're interested in learning more about my upcoming grief course, please reach out to me at griefinspired at gmail.com and I'll make sure to get you registered into that next course. And we spend a good amount of time, one night a week, and we go through the elements of grief and the experiences that we have and we work toward that peace and calm. And I have an upcoming video. I mentioned that I spent time uh, with Jane Weathers and I want you to go and watch that video when it's released because it's a remarkable testament to how grief can happen how Jane decided that she wanted something different, that she didn't want it to overwhelm her life. She took action. She decided to do things for herself and then including jumping into my course and how she's continued on her journey and how that journey is really bringing her a peace and a calmness that she really needs and wants and is so grateful for. So I can't wait to share that video with you. That's coming up in the next video. So stay tuned. Be here with us. This is grief inspired because I want you to let your grief inspire you today 
to find the peace that we so need. And it's going to help you keep on living. We want grief to be less painful, less confusing, less lonely. And that's what we do here. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think. Share this with friends, someone you know who may be grieving. And when you have questions, drop them below. Let other people know that they are not alone. Share your experience and together we can grieve better.